The next topic is probability and this will be somewhat mathematical. I would recommend uh, taking a little bit of notes in terms of uh, you know maybe writing on a sheet of paper or something like that. Uh, so we are going to be talking about probability of events, conditional probability and the topic of total probability. All right. So say there are two events A and B. So A and B are two events and these could occur as a result of a random experiment. Let me give you an example. It is easiest to explain this using an example. The example is somewhat elementary and uh, my approach is to start with something that is elementary and then uh, you know take things up a notch as we go ahead. Uh, so let us say you roll a pair of dice. Okay? So that means there are two dice that you roll uh, and uh, A is the event that you roll the number 7. So what are different ways of rolling a 7? Well, you could roll a 7 by rolling either a 1 and a 6 or you could roll a 2 and a 5 or you could roll a 3 and a 4. However, when we count the probabilities, we want to be a little careful. Notice that there are 36 total possible outcomes. So if you write it down, you could get a 1, 1 or a 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6 or you could get a 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5 and 2 and 6 are the two numbers that you get on the two dice and so on. 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 5 and 3, 6, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5 and 4, 6 or 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, 5 and 5, 6 and lastly you could get 6, 1 through 6, 6. Okay? These are the 36 equally likely outcomes. Out of these 36 equally likely outcomes, if you look at it, you have about, not about, you have exactly, uh, so if you look at this 1, 6, so this is a 7, 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 this is a 7. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that is the numerator 6. So out of the 36 possible outcomes, 6 result in 7. So the probability of rolling a 7 is 6 over 36, which is 1 sixth. Okay? Now let us look at another event. So now let us say B is the event that an even number is rolled. So B is the event that you would roll an even number. So the event of rolling an even number, uh, so that means the total, like 7, is an odd number. Okay? So the total being an even number, well, if you think about it, uh, there are multiple ways of doing this. We could either directly count this, so essentially it will be all the guys here, and these are even numbers. This is an even number. This is an even number. These are even numbers. And this is an even number. So there are there is one, so that is this one one. Then there are three of these, so that is three one, two, two, one, three, and then five of these, five, one, four, two, three, three, two, four, one, five. Five of these, six, two, five, three, four, four, three, five, two, six, and then three of these, six, four, five, five, four, six, and one, six, six. So that these are the various combinations that would result in an even number. So the probability of rolling an even number is 18 out of 36. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1 is 18. 18 divided by 36 is half. Well, this should not be surprising because you could either get an even number or an odd number, both of them being equally likely. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, you know, Therefore, this now the probabilities of the various numbers are not the same. So you should not think just because it's like heads or tails. Now there's a subtle difference there. However, uh, if you look at this, uh, you know those of us that play games or board games, this is an important piece of information. So the largest probability is pro probability of rolling a seven, which is one six. The probability of rolling a six or an eight is five over thirty six, uh, and so on. Okay. Um, and so, so let us go on. So one of the important rules of probability is that the probability of an event A should always be a number between 0 and 1. Okay? So that is the most important rule of probability is that for any event A, the probability of any A, now this is not this particular A that we are talking about, this is for any event A, the probability of A is always a number between 0 and 1. Next, we talk about 
events that are combinations of multiple events. So let's use a Venn diagram. I'm sure you've all seen Venn diagrams. So let's say this is set A, this is set B, this space here is A intersection B, and this entire set that I'm going to use a different color, this entire set in blue is A union B. So the event A union B is the event that either A occurs or B occurs or somewhere, uh, some, an event that is considered both A and B occurs. However, the event A intersection B is the event that both A and B have occurred. Okay? So let's use the A and B that we've defined above. That means A is the event of rolling a 7 and B is the event of uh, rolling an even number. Now, what is the probability of A union B? So this is the probability of rolling uh, either an even number or the number 7. So if you look at it, uh, in, in our events, A intersection B is the null set because 7 is an odd number. So A intersection B, that set is the null set. So the probability of A intersection B is equal to 0. However, I want to talk about the more generic relation between A and B. So this, this, the space here is called probability of A and the space here, the measure of that is probability of B. However, this is double counted, the A intersection B. So this is probability of A intersection B. So we have this result, the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A, which is this guy, plus the probability of B, which is this guy, minus this quantity. The reason we subtract it is because we have double counted the A intersection B part. So we subtract that. Now in this example, that is anyway zero. So it's not that big a deal. However, in general, so this is uh, 6 over 36. And this guy uh, is uh, uh, 18 over 36. So therefore, this is 24 over 36 which is two thirds, okay? So that's how you get this probability of event. So this is pretty straightforward. There's nothing tremendously complicated here. Next, we move on to the topic of conditional probability. Now we're going to look at two other events, C and D. We write this notation, probability of C given D. Now we say this as probability of C given D. Okay, so it's called conditional probability. It's conditioned on the value of D being given. Okay, so some people also say this as the probability of C occurring given that D has occurred. Okay, now there's some, some very subtle things like the order of the events are really not crucial. However, you know, it's easy to understand it that way that D has occurred and then C has not. So mathematically, how do we define this? So mathematically, we define the conditional probability in this fashion. The probability of C given D is the probability of C intersection D, that is C and D, both the event C and D occur, uh, divided by the probability that event D occurs. So now I'm going to give you an example. Now in this example, what I'm going to uh, look at is, let's take the country of Sri Lanka, and this is talk, we're talking about cricket, and let's say we take the last 10 one-day internationals, okay? So uh, let us say in those 10 one-day internationals, six games, Sri Lanka batted first and won, okay? So we have two events. C is the event that Sri Lanka batted first, and D is the event that they won. So this guy, C, this is the set C intersection D. They both batted first and they won. Now, eight of these games, Sri Lanka won. So this is your event D. So now I'm going to give you an example of how this could have happened in the last 10 games. So eight of the games, Sri Lanka won. So if you look at the last 10 games, Sri Lanka could have maybe won four, then lost one, then won two, then lost one, and then won three. So this is one, two, three. Oh, sorry, I think I had one extra. Um, let me erase this. Okay, so, so one, two, three, four, they won, and then they lost five, six, and then they lost seven, eight. So they won eight, okay, among the last 10 one day internationals. Now out of these eight, six of them, they batted first, okay? So they batted first in six of these games and won. So batted first, and then they won, okay? 
So then, uh, the, uh, so six of these games they batted first and won. So these are those six games. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six games they batted first and won. So clearly, uh, uh, so we are in a situation where we are asking the question. So we have this data. We have the data from the last ten games, of which there were six games in which they ba both batted first and they won, and eight games Sri Lanka won. Now we are saying. Well, if I were randomly selecting one of these 10 matches, somebody randomly picked one of these 10 matches, and someone told you, well, Sri Lanka won, okay? What is the probability that they batted first? So we are in this same situation of probability of C given D because we are looking at the event C, which is the event that Sri Lanka batted first. That's what we, want, we are asking. What's the probability that they batted first? We don't know that because we picked one of these games at random. We do know that Sri Lanka won, okay? So it is one of these games that they won. So it is not, so it's one of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one of these eight. And if I ask you the question, what's the probability that they batted first among those games? Well, clearly six out of those eight games they batted first. That's what this conditional probability essentially is telling you. So it is a probability of C intersection D, which is 0.6, because six out of the 10 games they both batted first as well as they won and divided by the probability of D, that is 0.6 over 0.8, which is 0.75. Now, if you look at it, they, among these eight options, eight uh, games that they won, uh, they, they batted first on six of them. So therefore, you get six divided by eight, which is also 75%. Now, let's move along and talk about the next topic called the law of total probability. Now, let's say we have n different events, B1 through Bn. Okay, I'm going to represent these events using a Venn diagram. Okay, so let's say I give a specific example of let's say n equals uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so I, I take the example of n equals 6. So this is event B1, this is event B2, this is event B3, this is event B4, this is event B5, and this is event B6. Now notice the characteristic of these events, they're mutually exclusive. By mutually exclusive, what we mean is that there is nothing common between two, two events. So essentially, bi intersection bj is a null set if i is not equal to j. That means b5 intersection b, b6, for example, is a null set because there is nothing common in them. So that is mutually exclusive. Also, we want exhaustive. So the probability that either B1, or B2, or B3, or B4, or B5, or B6 has to happen. Nothing else can happen. So their probabilities add up to one. They're exhaustive. They exhaust all the possible outcomes of this experiment. So the random experiment that could result in a bunch of events, B1 through B6, n equals six in this example. And in those events are such that the events are themselves mutually exclusive and exhaustive. That means if one event occurs, the other does not, and one of these n events must occur. Okay? Now I have another event called A. Now this event A is one that uh, is such that we don't know its probability. So I have an event A whose probability is unknown. Now we are asking the question, what is the probability of A? However, I do know not only the probabilities of B, but I also know these probabilities. The probability of A given B1, the probability of A given B2, and so on, A given B, and all those also we know. I'll give you an example to illustrate that in the next slide. How, however, the result is pretty straightforward. So if you think about it, this is your A. Okay, If you look at this, this is your event A in orange. So that's your A. A is nothing but A intersection B1 plus A intersection B2 plus A intersection B3 plus A intersection B4 plus A intersection B5 plus A intersection B6. So we could typically write A, probability of A, as the probability of A intersection B1 plus the probability of A intersection B2 and so on all the way to the probability of a intersection Bn. However, from the previous result, we know we can write down probability of C intersection D as the product probability of C given D times the probability of D. We can write it as a product and that's precisely what we will do here and get this result. 
because we can write probability of A given B1 as a probability of A, I'm sorry, probability of A intersection B1 as a probability of A given B1 times the probability of B1. So thereby we can compute the probability of A using this and this is what is called the law of total probability. So let's do an example to illustrate this concept. So say I have three coins, okay? Two are regular. So two co coins are ones which will result in heads or tails. And uh, let me put uh, H slash T, heads or tails. And the third coin is two-headed. This is the diabolical coin where I could get only heads, okay? So I have three coins. Two coins are regular. This is a regular. This is a regular coin. And this is a two-headed coin, okay? Now, I'm going to pick one of these three coins at random and I'm going to toss it, okay? The question is, what is the probability that I will get heads? Now, let's think of this in terms of the law of total probability that we just saw a little while ago. So let's say I have three events, B1, B2, and B3. These are the events that I choose the first regular, that is this coin. This is the event, the event of choosing this is B1, the event of choosing this is B2, and the event of choosing this is B3. These are my three events that could occur. Notice they are mutually exclusive. That is, I only picked one coin. It has to either be the first regular coin or the second regular coin or the third regular coin. It is also mutually exclusive. That means if I picked the first regular coin, I did not pick the two-headed coin. Okay, I may have said the third regular. I'm sorry, the third coin is a two-headed coin. And uh, a is the event of getting ahead. So I don't know the probability, right? Notice that I don't know the probability of getting ahead, but I do know this. I do know two things. One that I know that the probability that I would select the regular coin one or the regular coin two are both equal to one third. However, the probability that I will select the two headed coin is also one third. They're all equally likely. Now, what's the probability of tossing a head given that I picked the first coin, the second coin, the third coin. Now, if I pick the first regular coin, the probability of scoring a head is half because I have head or tail, it's a regular coin. Now, if I toss the second coin, again, I have the option of getting a head or tail, so the probability is half. However, in the third coin with probability one, for sure, I'll always get a head. So therefore, I have these three probabilities that are quite easy to compute, like I said a little while ago. Now, if you use the law of total probability and write this down in the following way, remember n equals 3 here, the probability of A is the probability of A given B1 times the probability of B1 plus the probability of A given B2 times the probability of B2 plus the probability of A given B3 times the probability of B3. If you write down the numbers, A given B1 from here is 0.5 multiplied by the probability of B1 is one thirds plus 0.5 times one thirds plus 1 times one third. So if you add them up, you get one, one thirds, you can take out as common, times half plus half plus one, which is two. Therefore, the probability of getting a hedge is two thirds. Now, if you think about it, it is somewhat straightforward because in reality, there are six different heads that could have showed up, right, when you toss a coin. So out of these six heads, I'm sorry, up to the six faces that could show up, the two tails and the four heads, what's the probability that one of those four heads shows up? So you could have also computed that from basics and said, well, that has to be two thirds because there are four heads out of these six faces that could have showed up. Uh, and therefore, the probability of that you'll get a head is four out of six, which is two thirds. All right, next we move on to random variables, which will be the next topic. Thank you.